Welcome to Mayo Clinic Q&A. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. In 2016, the FDA published final rules on the new Nutrition Facts label for packaged goods. It was the first major change to the label since it was introduced in 1994. Now, the changes are based on updated science. In fact, we're smarter than we used to be, (laughs) including the link between diet and chronic diseases like diabetes and heart disease. The new labels should make it easier for all of us to make a better informed food choice. Here to uh, oh, many food choices that we have to make, and here to discuss those changes along with some important nutrition advice is Mayo Clinic registered dietitian Ms. Kristen Free. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Happy to be here. Kristen, good to have you. Thank you. So you've got several letters behind your name. You've got RD, RDN, and LD. What do all those letters mean? <laughs> what are your yes. qualifications? Right, right. So interestingly, we used to be registered dietitians just simple Period. as that yes but then the confusion came about with consumers do i go to a registered dietitian or nutritionist for nutrition advice seems like you'd go to a nutritionist right in n right <laughs> well in n yes so they actually added registered dietitian nutritionist to our title because it was so confusing so um to be a registered dietitian you are a nutritionist but a nutritionist is not automatically a registered dietitian. So dietitians go through all kinds of comprehensive experience and education to be able to be the food and nutrition experts and be able to give you evidence-based information. Good to know you're well qualified. Yeah, (laughs) what's a licensed dietitian? Right, so licensed dietitian means that I can practice in Minnesota as I'm licensed in Minnesota. So if I worked in Colorado, they may not have licensure required. Wisconsin, you may be a certified dietitian. So it just means you can practice in that state. So these labels are out. Do you think that anyone is gonna notice? Yes, I think they will because the the changes, some of them are big enough that they're meant to kind of jump out at us on the labels, the products. Mm -hmm. For example, what's what's different? Yeah, oh my goodness, so many things. So the big thing is probably calories because (laughs) it's bolder, it's bigger. They've allotted some more space in the small label that it is. I did not need my cheaters to see it. That's how big it is. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Yes. Big and bold. Yes. Yes. What else has changed? What other changes? So serving sizes, the actual amounts, as well as, again, the font size. Um, We have different um, information on added sugars will be in there, not only just the total sugars anymore. Um, the, so, uh, tell, yeah. us, tell us about added sugars. How does the FDA define an added sugar and why do you need to be careful about how much added sugar is in there? Right, right. So FDA defines added sugar as any sweeteners that are added during product processing and then they're packaged as such. So something that would be a more natural sugar would be dairy products, fruits. We're not so concerned about that as dietitians. However, the added sugars above and beyond natural occurring sugars, we need to limit. So American Heart Association recommends six to nine teaspoons a day of added sugar as a max. That's breakfast, (laughs) isn't it? (laughs) However, we as Americans tend to consume closer to about 17 teaspoons, so about double the amount. And this All right, is, so in yeah. this example label, it's got uh, added sugars 20%. So I should add up the so that my added sugars total no more than 100% in a day. Is that in it? a day, correct. Yep, okay. so that 20% you were looking at, that's our percent daily value. Meant to be just a general guide. Um, it is based on someone eating 2,000 calories a day. So if you are eating 1,500 calories a day, we wouldn't recommend that low for you, but um, you would have a smaller percentage to be kind of shooting for. I think especially for my needs, the sugar thing is the number one thing that I watch Mm -hmm. because there are some products and I'll just pick on ketchup uh, you know there's that has sugar in them that don't need Mm -hmm. it you can buy versions of it that don't have it Correct. so that hidden sugars Mm -hmm. um is it going to be easier to find to see those now with this new label absolutely and we as registered dietitians are excited about this because historically we've had people watching out for all yogurt because they just thought yogurt has sugar 
However, it has natural lactose, milk sugar, and sometimes added sugars. So this will help educate and differentiate. Mm -hmm. All right, fats. Uh, what's changed there? Anything? And I, yeah. I noticed that they have saturated fat and trans fat. I assume those are the bad fats, and you want to try to avoid those if possible? Yeah, limit the saturated and trans fat. Absolutely. So they've removed the calories from fat row on the Nutrition Facts label. And the reason for that is, yes, back in the 1990s, the low-fat diets were all the craze. However, they found through research that it's not necessarily the amount of fat we're, we're trying to limit, but kind of watching out for the quality of fat, shooting more for the unsaturated fats, so the opposite of saturated and trans fat. Mm -hmm. All right, and the other change was in nutrients required. So uh, that's in the at the bottom of the label. Explain that to us. Yeah, so four nutrients is what they have space for at the bottom of the label, and these are the vitamins and minerals. So the ones they choose to put on the bottom of the label there are the ones that Americans tend to be lower in our intake. So are so, these the same on every label? They are, yes. Vitamin those, D, calcium, iron, and potassium. Correct, yes. Yes, and so the two they've changed out as of um, as of now would be vitamin D and potassium are now taking the place of vitamin A and vitamin C. So we're not seeing the same deficiencies we saw 20 plus years ago in vitamin A and vitamin C, so they've replaced those. Um, that being said, however, manufacturers can put any of the vitamins and minerals they want to voluntarily add on their labels. So mm -hmm. it's a good question that Tracy brought up at the beginning. How many people do you think actually pick up a food item and, and look at the label? Is it more than we think? You, how much do you think? <laughs> I don't know. I just I know that it, it takes people, longer it? to shop it does. when you do that. Mm -hmm. But then when you find the products that you want, um, I, I do think that this this label will make it easier for me mm -hmm. to go shopping, that's for sure. I mean, the servings per container is also mm -hmm. a really important piece that I'm glad that that is a little bit more highlighted as well. Yes, yes, and that's just it. And I think you are maybe going to add in that you don't necessarily look at the product label every single time you buy that product because we naturally think that it's not going to change a whole lot. It could change, and someone with food allergies maybe are looking a little closer for other things on it, but Yes, they are actually finding through surveys people are reading nutrition labels. So I'll be curious to see if the numbers go up this point forward um, with the new label. Mm -hmm. So um, from your standpoint, if, if I pick this label up, I don't have a lot of time. What, what should jump out at me? What should I be careful uh, of paying particular attention to? Yeah, so as a dietitian, that is a loaded question <laughs> because, right, so we want to know what is your nutrition goal. So if you are trying to lose weight, we might talk about serving size, the amount of servings per container, and calories maybe are going to be the highlight that you want to look at. So calories, how many is too yeah. many? What, what do I oh, want to avoid? Oh, goodness, another <laughs> great question. So that would be a good conversation with a dietitian because if your goal is to lose weight or maintain weight or gain weight, and then we'll look at what's realistic. So um, if it's more of a snack item compared to a meal or meal replacement, we're going to be wanting smaller amount of calories for snacks and maybe higher for a food because we wanted to satisfy you. It for kind a of meal. becomes a numbers game at that point, yeah, Tom. It, it does. does. Yeah. Carrot sticks better than Cheetos. <laughs> right. they Both kind of look the same. <laughs> That's why I don't look at them. <laughs> all right. Well, the new Nutrition Facts labels are here to help make sure that we all have the most accurate, up to date information about what we're eating. If we want to eat healthier, and who doesn't, right, Tom? That's right. Yeah. Yep. Take a look at those new labels. Our thanks to registered dietitians. Dietitian, nutritionist, Christian, Kristen Free. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Kristen. Mm -hmm.